Welcome to the Purposely Aligned Entrepreneur Podcast presented by Boss Girl Creative. This is episode number 468. Today, I'm talking about what it means to figure out your niche. Now let's dive in. Have you already found business success but feel lonely at the top? Or do you feel like you're at a place in your business where others just don't get it? Or maybe you feel like you have to make yourself smaller in order for others to not feel less than. Or maybe just a little bit of all three. But with all that said, there is good news because I've been there and I see you, sister. I'm Taylor Bradford, the torchbearer of this podcast and sisterhood, and I'm here to lead and inspire you to stay purposely aligned in the success you have found and provide you with support, guidance, and a sisterhood to keep going. Because I do get it. Your business journey isn't meant to be traveled alone. So grab a notebook, your favorite pen, and a bevy, and let's dive into this together with this latest podcast episode. Welcome to the Purposely Aligned Entrepreneur Podcast presented by Boss Girl Creative and me. Hello, welcome to episode 468. I'm your host, Taylor Bradford. Thank you so much for being here. We're talking about what it means to actually figure out your niche, to like come to the realization of who you are serving, like who you best can serve with the product or offering or service that you provide, what solution you're actually providing your ideal customer or what problem you're solving for them. And uh, I'm really excited because this ties in to my social experiment, which I am going to unveil some aha moments recently and things that I'm doing and making some pivots. And it's the whole purpose of why I am talking about what it means to actually like figure out your niche. Before we get there, let's talk about what's been going on in social media world. Social media headline number one, Meta verified users can now restrict DM requests to other paying users only. A new control will enable you to block all DM requests from non-paying users. Social media headline number two, TikTok adds a floating player on desktop to facilitate expanded viewing. Now you can keep watching TikTok clips as you switch between tabs. Social media headline number three, and keeping with TikTok, a U.S. appeals court fast tracks hearing over the TikTok sell-off. But will it help TikTok avoid an effective ban in the U.S.? Stay tuned. And the final social media update for this week, X is hiding post likes for all users. X believes that this will help users feel more free to engage with whatever they want. And that wraps up this week's social media headlines. Okay, so let's talk about what it means when you finally like have an aha moment about your niche and who you're actually serving. And kind of where I'm going with this is not necessarily like a change in niche. Like I am a digital marketer, but trying to like narrow down who I'm talking to because the great landscape of digital marketing legitimately spans all the way from newbies to veteran business owners who are marketing online because digital marketing is all about selling something online and marketing the thing that you sell. And so in this whole like social media experiment that I've been doing since the beginning of January, so we're five months in, I finally realized that, well, I realized a long time ago that the very first account that I created I was posting total crap because that was the experiment. The experiment was can what I saw happening out on social media, could it be replicated? What parts could be replicated? And ultimately, none of it can be replicated. Like the women that I saw making extreme income claims who now have been banned out of the programs they were selling or affiliating for but have just pivoted into other things. So they're just perpetuating the problem and creating more fraud. 
And uh, so ultimately, it, it was not a business model. It's, it was definitely not a sustainable business model. And just in general, it was not a business model. And for the course itself that they originally affiliated for, the course itself is solid information. It's on the level of B-School. And I loved B-School back in 2015, Marie Forleo's B-School. Legendary Marketer is a strong program if you're learning how to like just run a business online and get your business foundations and just understand the landscape of what it means to scale and grow a business. And so I highly encourage you if that is something that you're lacking and you want more experience with, then then definitely check out Legendary Marketer. But all this to say, so I've been down this road, I had one Instagram account, and then I kind of paused creating content for it to try a faceless account. So I created a faceless account in about the end of March. At the same time, about a week later at the end of March, I decided to pivot the first account to a faceless account or kind of a hybrid account, deleted, actually I archived all of the content that was the crap content. And, but then I went all in on the faceless account. But what I felt was happening on the faceless account is there was a lack of relationship building for me personally. And while I could keep it up, I felt that I myself am the connector point to what it is that I do online and how I can best serve people and how I can best lift people up and nurture them through their online journeys, through their business journeys, through their digital marketing journeys, whatever label you want to place on it. I felt just this void, this gap, and I was like trying to figure out how to overcome that without showing my face. And so my content was fantastic. I made a mistake when I decided to kind of participate in a, I will do something for you if you do something for me. And so I had all of these digital marketers in this one program come follow my account. And some of them I followed back and some of them I didn't based on the content that I was seeing. But that jeopardized how Instagram's algorithm actually served up my content. And prior to doing that, and and ultimately what my goal in that thinking was, I just wanted 100 followers. Because once you have 100 followers, you get more data out of Instagram. And you can then look at the content you're creating with better data and then continue to serve up the better functioning content to your audience. And I totally screwed that up by doing a like for a like, a follow for a follow. So I like kicking myself for that. And it's kind of made me feel like, do I need to start over? Do I just scrap this whole experiment? And uh, so I've, I've kind of been contemplating that. Then I came upon my biggest wedding weekend of May and had a huge event and then challenging storms in the area. It was an outside event and we worked legitimately 11 hours between getting there and setting it up and then coming back at strike to tear it all back down. I had farm tables and chairs and bars and three lounges and my stuff was all over this person's property and it just was it was just stressful and so i put this instagram account on the back burner and it just allowed me to focus on what it was that i was doing for my client for sugar creek but also it allowed me to kind of ponder what am i doing with this account can this account serve me in a way that i can't get through any of my other accounts and so i kind of been playing this pros and cons list in my head And I've been talking to my good friend Alicia through Marco Polo app. And most of the time, it's just me talking to the app. And then she listens. Actually, that's how Marco Polo works. Uh, It's it's basically you don't talk to the other person live. You're poloing them. And um, anyway, so today I was like, oh, my gosh. So I've I've been on the fence, like, do I show my face on this account? How much do I show my face if I choose that? Do I link it to Boss World Creative? Do I link it to 
this podcast? Do I tell people who I am? Because here is where I feel in the digital marketing space, specifically the MRR content, which is, which is master reseller rights. What's happening is all of these people are being taken advantage of, and it's just literally killing me inside because they see people making income claims, which I've, you know, I talked about truth in advertising a couple of episodes ago that you cannot use income claims to market the thing that you're selling. You can't use lifestyle claims. It's against the Federal Trade Commission's policies, which are laws in the United States. And regardless of whether or not you are in the United States, if you have a United States-based audience of any kind, even if it's just one person, you are bound by our laws. And so I've just been really frustrated by what I'm seeing and people not knowing that there are laws, there are rules, because they're just seeing people do the things. And uh, so anyways, I've been frustrated with that. I've been frustrated with the lack of like me. And you can, you can, because I, I, I have been doing it, you can create a personality through a faceless brand. You you absolutely can. But for me, long term, I didn't think that I could just keep going without people knowing who I was. And not that I am a celebrity by any means, but I felt there was this lack of connection. And so there's not this like storytelling and storytelling is such a vital component to attracting your ideal audience, your ideal customer. And I, even though I was telling my story, there was no like voice behind my story. So I could have just recorded my voice and then you would have heard it. But that's like 10 steps when I can just get on camera and talk to the camera and talk to whomever might watch my stories. So as I'm like, just regurgitating this to Alicia in a Marco Polo. And I'm, I'm walking through like, okay, I think I've decided to show my face in stories. I think my real content or my Instagram reels content is going to stay faceless because I do think that there is power in the content I'm creating. But I do want a connection to people in stories. And last week I saw an Instagram person make this like It was like such an aha moment. I was like, oh my gosh, that is, why haven't I thought of it this way? When you're creating content on Instagram, and forgive me if I'm repeating myself from last week's episode, I've slept since then and had a lot of stress since then, but it's important to repeat even if I've said it, and I probably will be doing a podcast episode in the future about this, but when you're creating reels for Instagram, You're creating reels or you're creating content for people that are not following you. And so why would you be then sharing that content into your stories to the people that are already following you? So your content and how you create content needs to have two separate avenues The content you create for your feed, whether it be a reel, a carousel, or a static post, and the content that you're creating for stories, it needs to serve your different audiences, even if it's the same person in like in the overall umbrella. If your ideal customer is a stay-at-home mom who is looking to figure out how to put a home-cooked meal on the table three out of seven days a week, If that is your ideal client, then the content you're producing for Reels may look more like an easy grocery store list. And so once you are getting them to follow you, you're serving up recipes in your stories. You see kind of how that those avenues are different. It's still serving the same client, but you've got non-followers potentially seeing your reels and you have followers seeing your stories, why mix the two? Now, I can see where you can create companion content for the topic that you're producing in reels and then serve up a stronger version of that in stories. 
So for for me, for example, I am teaching you how to grow a digital marketing business online. So my content is created on Reels is I'm trying to get people to follow me. So I'm trying to give out a lot of value in order for that exchange of a follow. Now I'm going to think of my stories as a way to nurture and sell because they're already, they are, they've already chosen to follow me. And so now I need to nurture them in their journey and I need to sell to them. So content out on reels, I'm not selling. Content in stories, I'm nurturing and I'm selling. So I want you to think about that as you are, you know, contemplating the content you're creating for Instagram. I think also, you know, this could work on Facebook and, um, but just, just think about it. Think about how how your reels are currently performing. What's the percentage of followers to non-followers? And then think about how many are actually watching your stories. That would be a majority probably of your followers. So as I'm like contemplating like all of these aha moments, I have another one. I'm like, you know, like what separates me from other digital marketers? Well, I have 15 plus years experience as a digital marketer. I've I've been online since 2008, and I've really kind of made it my mission to be a teacher, to be a coach, to be a mentor to people looking to create, run, grow, scale online businesses. Now it has a fancy term of being a digital marketer. But I, my sweet spot, even though I come on this podcast and I talk about, you know, being in the trenches just alongside you and learning and growing and pivoting and being an, a sponge so that I can continue to teach, like all of these things is what creates this podcast. But ultimately, this Instagram, this social experiment Instagram account, who I'm serving or who I will best serve once I have narrowed this down and what I decided today is digital marketers that are one to three years in business. I'm not trying to work with a newbie. If a newbie finds me, great, but my content is best consumed by somebody that is in year one to year three. And when I had that revelation, I was like, oh my gosh. And I've also been like in my head, outside of all these courses that I've taken and all of them that have MRR rights and some of them that are just affiliate relationships that I could sell, like these are all components that I could offer somebody in this like bubble, this one to three years in business. I can sell that eventually in my email marketing campaigns or my stories, but I have a book I have a book, Pillars and Purpose, How to Build a Business That Works for You. I've already created it. I've already created the content and it serves this audience. People in business, online, digital marketers in one to three years of their business. This book, the book that I wrote, best serves that human. And so as I started contemplating this and talking about this out loud and like really like just getting there in my brain space, because I was like, I need to make this work. Do I shut down this account? Do I go all in and switch it all over to Boss World Creative's Instagram account? Like I've got all of these things like just rolling through my head. And I'm like, wait, Boss World Creative's Instagram is specifically for this podcast. And this other Instagram, which I'm going to tell you the name of it now, is digitally tailored. That is the Instagram. If you want to follow it, great. If you don't, you're not going to hurt my feelings. But this account is to serve anyone in business between one and three years. Now, obviously, it can attract people that are new and people that are veterans. But my goal is to serve the one to three year business owner online. And my book does that. And so I am going to create a course around my book. And that is the one thing that I'm going to focus all in on and sell for 365 days to see what happens. Because I think when we also start trying to sell too many offers, we confuse the people that are already following us. And so I'm going to make it my mission for 365 days once I get the course created I'm going to focus on selling that thing on digitally tailored. I'm going to create a sales funnel specifically for that thing. I'm going to create all of my content specifically around selling that thing. 
when I create reels, I'm going to create content that best serves up to get somebody to follow me, then I can eventually sell them on this course. So this was such an aha moment for me. And Alicia, I don't know if you're going to listen to this episode or not. You've been a, a long time friend of mine and fan of the things that I do. And, you know, you're one of my biggest cheerleaders. I appreciate you listening to my polos where I just ramble because it helps me get things out of my brain and out and I can hear them and I can get some feedback and I can get some insights. And I finally feel like there's been this missing piece with the podcast, with what it is that I do online. And now I have the a missing piece. I, there may be a few more out there. You know, I'm always like open to pivots and I'm open to, you know, things that come at me. And as a complete side note, we're looking at getting into the Airbnb space and the game of Airbnb and making that a new revenue stream eventually. And, you know, I'm I'm always like, how do I make more revenue streams for myself? So when I'm ready to hang up the more physically demanding things that I do, which is Sugar Creek, you know, I'm professionally moving furniture into a space, out of a space, into a trailer, out of a trailer, you know, it's basically moving furniture four times for one event. And it's very physically demanding doing that for Saturday's event. And I I have bigger scale events, so I don't have to work as often. I have gotten smart with that. But it takes my body a couple of days to recover. And like, how much longer can I do that? I have added more people to my delivery team. So I'm not the one that's doing all the heavy lifting all the time, but still the time involved and the stress when there's weather, like just completely knocks it out of me. Plus, it's important for me to be on site to make sure that I it's my stamp of approval it, or it is my rentals and I want to make sure it looks good and, you know, I'm not embarrassed by it, etc. And, you know, same thing like showing up and, and making sure that it all gets loaded back into trailers and trucks appropriately and safe for travel, safe for transport and all of that. So I'm thinking about these other revenue streams and I'm I'm literally thinking, how do I become more nomadic? How do I become more digital? And I feel like this is a really great pivot for digitally tailored. And so tonight on that particular Instagram account, I did show my face. I did talk about this pivot because I feel like I need more connection with my followers and for them to hear the passion, for me to be able to attach a face to an account so that they do recognize me when I pop up in their feed or when I pop up in their stories. So all things for you to consider regarding everything that I've shared, but I I do think that this is going to be a powerful move for me to link digitally tailored to Bosco Creative and this podcast and creating a course around the book that I've already written and even making changes to the book and kind of creating a version two of the book. And uh, so I'm just like, I finally feel elated. I finally feel like I've got some like just the creative juices are going and I couldn't be here without you listening to this podcast and for friends being cheerleaders and big supporters. And it just really means a lot to me. So thank you for being on this journey. Thank you for listening to the things that come out of my mouth every single week. I so appreciate it. We're getting really close to celebrating nine years of this podcast. We're literally like 32, 33 days away from that, which is so wild. But I'm like excited for year nine. I'm excited to see how I can grow digitally tailored with kind of this new breath of life. And with this focus, with this focus of working towards helping business owners, digital marketers that are one to three years in in business, because the content I'm producing is best suited to that person. The content, for example, the reel I made today for that account was all about how to be more productive once you get rid of the clutter. And I talk about in the reel, in the actual context of the caption, I talk about things that can help you do that. Because if you are cluttered in your space, you're cluttered in your mind. 
And once you remove the clutter out of your space, you free the clutter out of your mind and your mindset changes and your productivity levels increase. It's wild how much stuff really can weight you down and how much stuff that's not organized can hold you back. And that kind of content is not suitable to a newbie who has no clue that they need to be more productive, you know? You know what I'm saying? So I'm excited. I'm excited. And if you want to follow that account, it is digitally tailored with a D on the end, T-A-Y-L-O-R-D. And uh, yeah, we'll see how things go. But now I feel like there is a true focus. I, you know, everything that I was attempting to do through the social experiments, which I'm still going to be, you know, focused on giving you updates on this podcast related to growing a brand new Instagram and the strategies that I try and the courses that I find. Like I took one course recently and uh, they talked about the hashtag strategy and some things related to like being able to serve up your content to non-followers versus followers. And while the content was good, it was not worth the price that I invested in it. And so I want to make sure that I know what is being taught out there and what best serves an audience and what best doesn't. And, but honestly, it's because I do have 15 years in business in like digital marketing business. I've got longer experience than that in business, but it's a price point where I was like, that was a waste of my money, but it's probably not for somebody else. But you know, I'm always looking to see if somebody can teach me something new. And while it was a decent refresher, it wasn't worth what I paid for it. So anyways, all things considering, thank you so much for listening to this episode. I hope you found it inspiring, insightful, helpful. And um, if you haven't rated my show on Apple Podcasts, I would love that. Um, Say hi, rate the show, tell me you know, what you love about it. And uh, yeah, so until next time, I hope you have a great rest of this week. Oh, wait, before I go, thank you truly for your support of my own business journey and this podcast, The Purposely Aligned Entrepreneur. If you know another entrepreneur who is in the same business trenches, who has already found success, but might be feeling a bit lonely in their journey, My hope is that you'll share this podcast and this sisterhood with them because this, what we do day in and day out, isn't meant to be done alone. Speaking of lonely, if you're ready to squash the business journey loneliness, stop what you're doing right now and join the sisterhood. Visit bossgirlcreative.com forward slash sisterhood. I can't wait to see you in there.